Woo! My boy, how's it going? Sir? Three guys, how's it going, my man? <laughs> yes, I'm brilliant, my brother. How about you, buddy? Yeah, bad. Very well. Thank you. Very well. It's been a while since you know I've chatted, but it's uh, yeah, it's been a nice catch up before this. So, um, yeah, man, I'm really excited. Uh, today we're doing our superhumanship episode off the back of chatting to Bo Miles last week, and uh, Bo Miles um, is an award-winning filmmaker. He's a poly jobist and a doctor of philosophy, and he's a guy who absolutely loves setting himself challenges, and he's done some quite remarkable things. Um, and and you know we had some great takeaways from that conversation. And actually talking about challenges, Craig, the first one was actually about the importance of setting yourself challenges and basically getting sort of completely out of your comfort zone. And I don't know, I just love this whole philosophy because there's so much that you learn when you set yourself a challenge. You know, we kind of go through um, day-to-day life, just kind of like going with the flow of things and never really kind of step outside of that comfort zone and, and and look at our day-to-day lives and go, how can I actually make this more exciting? What can I learn from, you know, my day-to-day sort of routine and uh, make this some sort of challenge and some sort of learning experience? And, you know, life does get really, really kind of exciting when you start pushing the boundaries and, and challenging that status quo. And I think that there's just so much that you can learn from, setting yourself challenges and you can like improve your skills you can just understand things better and you can have like rather profound experiences from this and the the thing that i really really dig about challenges is because you're the one that's setting them like the outcome doesn't really matter you know like there's no failure there's no right there's no wrong it's just basically a a learned experience which is just uh, such a cool thing and you know, you, you don't have to kind of start massive, you know, with these things you do, like Bo. I mean, he's done some incredible challenges, but start doing small little things like, you know, brush your teeth with your left hand or, or, or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Set challenges with your mates and do these sort of things. So there's so much to setting yourself challenges that I think is important for us to each kind of try and bring into our day to day lives. Hey, Craig. A hundred percent, Gareth. And these things go a long way. As you said, you get so much collateral, don't you, in terms of your skills that you pick up or the, the fun that you may have on those journeys. But challenges can also come in some strange ways. So Gareth and I were having a chat before this just about the state of the world and some politics and things like that. And, you know, oftentimes we don't want to challenge ourselves to actually get to the root of things or try and understand situations. Sometimes it's a lot easier just to come home, sit down on the couch, and just relax and not actually think for ourselves. And this is a big problem in society sometimes. So these challenging, uh, the challenges that Bo suggests, you know, go a long way. And and sometimes uh, it's really important to just take that moment and do the things that are a bit harder and not just go with the flow and and do the easy stuff. And one of the things in that realm is um, reusing. And, And this is a big, obviously driving force behind what, how Bo lives his life and the way he does things in his life. And what he's, he's really on about is like, we all know that we use a lot of, we, we use as human beings, we consume a lot. And there is a, there's a time when that's just not going to be okay. And we've probably reached that a while ago already, you know, and he's uh, one way of challenging yourself is just to try and upcycle in some way, shape or form, or at least start experimenting small. So we all know about like, you know, reusable cups and things like that, but he, he, and recycling and, and things like that. But he, he takes it a lot further. He, he wants to take, um, uh, make things and buy things that are going to be with him until he's like a hundred years old. You know, he's going to have it his whole life. And I think it's a massive, uh, up, uh, it's a massively important thing for us to all explore more. Like how can we take things that we use for granted and throw away and get new ones? How can we change that narrative that we've created for ourselves in the stuff that we use and where can we maybe just challenge ourselves in a way of uh, thinking ahead so in other words it doesn't always have to be that you can build your own house or something like he can do you know he's very skilled with these things but it can be just thinking ahead okay I'm going out for lunch today or, or for when I'm prepping my food for the week maybe just take my actual knife and fork with from home and not necessarily just go and buy a plastic one. So it's, it can be as simple as just having some forethought and the desire 
uh, to do something like this and not necessarily needing thousands of crazy skills. And I think this is really the message that Bo's kind of uh, um, all in on, isn't it, Gareth? Yeah, for sure, Craig. I think it's the, that element of not taking the, the easiest path. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. so, so how can I almost make this a little bit difficult? Like you said, you know, let me take in my own knives and forks to work every single day, my, my metal pair of knives and forks. And uh, instead of getting the ones that are given to me by the shop that I buy them at, that I'm just going to literally throw away as soon as I'm finished with them. Because after, if I take my own ones in, uh, I then have to wash them afterwards because I have to reuse them and, and you know, I have to wash them, go to the, the toilets or whatever to wash them or to maybe have a sink in your office sort of thing. So it's, it's taking that difficult part, path. That, that, that's the, you know, one of the big things which I think that he, he says is important. And, and, you know, like just to give maybe one other quick example is like, you know, instead of driving to work, he walked to work. Like, you know, that's mm. crazy. Like, you know, most of us just take that easy path and we, we it's, we're just conditioned to do it. But um, what can you do that is not necessarily going to cost you money or whatever that you currently do every single day? And how can you slightly change it to uh, challenge yourself and, and learn from? And I just think this is such a great way, you know, for, for doing things in life, because then it also leads on to other parts of your life too. You know, you start actually becoming just a, a bit more aware maybe, you know, of your actions. And I think, I think that's like a really sort of powerful outcome as well. And uh, talking about this, Craig, I mean, one of the ways that he does this, of course, is through his storytelling. And he has rather amazing storytelling skills. And that was like a real big thing that we picked up, wasn't it? Oh, massively. And the nicest thing when someone can tell a good story and you're just captivated and listening to every word, but you don't pick up any sort of uh, preachiness or hierarchy or any of these kinds of things and this humility comes through but when you finish listening to the story you want to make a change in your own life or take action and that's a powerful uh, way to tell a story and I think we're all telling ourselves stories every day and telling other people stories every day and I think this is a skill that we can all kind of cultivate and it's you know we, we hear a lot about storytelling and these kind of things but what does it really mean and it's, I think what it comes down to is that humility, knowing that we can all connect on some level. We've all had similar experiences on, on, on some, in, way, in some way, way, shape or form, but to transmit that to someone else in a way that's fun and exciting. And you can just start that every day. Like when, you, when someone asks you, how have you been and what did you do on the weekend? You know, you can practice these little things and it's, it can just make, you can go from, I played tennis, it was great, to something like, you know, where it's just a bit more exciting and people go, wow, that's captivating and it's just more fun. And you can actually play with this and, and you'll be surprised how engaged people can become. And the other thing with storytelling is like, what, what is the story that you kind of tell yourself about who you are yourself? And, and what does that really mean? Who are you? But then for, based off the back of that, what is the story we transmit to others? What, who are you when you ask your mom and dad or your friends? Who do they see when you ask what is the story of Craig, you know, for example, and this is a really interesting sort of concept to me and, and to Gareth, because it's like the actions that we do day to day, uh, basically are what other people see. And that's based off how we sort of see ourselves on some level, but we also transmitting something to others when we're sitting alone at home. What is the, what is that story? Who am I then? And, and is there a big difference? And I think this is quite a fascinating sort of concept, isn't it, Gareth? Yeah, it is, Craig. And, and, and the one thing that I just want to touch on there that you mentioned is the, is the preachy part. Like, I love that about Bo. Like, he just, he could tell the story uh, without being preachy. And actually, spreading a message without being preachy is probably a better way to say it. And I think in this day and age, uh, there's so many people now that are like sort of, you know, online influencers and trying to spread things. But often doing it in the wrong way, like giving advice. Do you know what I mean? But so if you can still tell a story without being preachy, i.e. giving advice, you're going to really sort of build up rapport with people that follow you. You know, you're going to build up that trust. And I think in this day and age with business that's online and there's so many people out there and the market seems cluttered, it's the people that can build up trust 
and build up rapport that are going to be the ones that are basically, you know, sort of head and shoulders above, above everybody else. And I think that's a really important part of the storytelling. Um, and another part of it, of course, which he says is like, you know, through his videos of storytelling is like, you know, if you want to sort of influence people in a positive way, your actions will speak louder than words. Like, you know, so like he says in his great Australian slangy way is monkey see, monkey do, you know. <laughs> so this is often a good way to tell a story and to spread uh, your message and sort of uh, have an influence and stuff. And I just think um, it, it's such a, an in, integral part of uh, storytelling um, and uh, spreading uh, good positive vibes and, and messages. And, and another way, which I know was a, a, a big favorite of yours, Craig, is when you tell a story is to share your insights. So maybe you can tell us like, you know, why that kind of meant a lot to you and, and what, what sort of like, w just why it was a big, a big thing for you. Yeah. Th yeah. Thanks. Gary. Yeah. I think for both of us, really, we, it was a, it was such a obvious thing when you think about it, when, when obviously when he's a good storyteller, he, he makes it seem like, Oh, wow. Why hadn't I thought of that before in a way? But the reality is when you have a good storyteller and someone that you captivated by, they are giving you some kind of an essence of an experience, which is not just to do with the nuts and bolts of what actually happened. And I think a lot of us fall into that trap when we're telling stories to others about things like, then I did this, then I did that, then I went there and I did this. And that's great. This, you know, you need some of that framing. However, he takes it a whole layer deeper and he talks about the insight that you've gained from experiences, from writings, from other things. So, you know, one of the things we discussed was poetry, for example, and, you know, a poem is is a shortened version uh, of, of a big story or a, of a deeper meaning. And the way I read a poem or you read a poem, uh, might, we might extract something different. Uh, and actually, you will extract something different because it's come through two different filters, uh, i.e. two different human beings. And when you have that kind of scenario, uh, then you can... Um, and you and you want to transmit what you've learned then you've, you what have you taken from that so what is the essence of the story so um, there were some cool examples though that he um, you know that he spoke about through I mean this is a guy that's you know taken uh, a kayak around through Africa he's done incredible journeys um, even you know he's just his stories themselves the nuts and bolts with him are like already ex super exciting but he still goes that layer deeper and he talks about like you know, how does the, how does the water feel on his skin? And, and what is the, when the sunrise came up over the ocean, what are the emotions that welled up inside of him? And that's the stuff that's so exciting and also are always going to be unique. So when you're telling a story, whether it be on your Facebook or Instagram or wherever you are to your buddies, think about what you've gained from an experience uh, over the weekend, for example, try that in your new week and you'll be surprised how people will be captivated about um, the experiences that you've had. And those are always going to be unique, which is really exciting to add some uniqueness to the people around you and to your own life, you know, and, and start thinking for ourselves is such an important thing. Um, and, and part of thinking for ourselves, and this is something obviously Bo being a philosophy he's thought a lot about is happiness we, we we have this strong drive for wanting to be happy in the modern world and happiness is a very contentious idea and it's quite fraught with some difficulty but also it seems kind of obvious you know we want to be happy but but is it actually that obvious gareth yeah for sure craig this was actually one of my favorite parts of, of the chat because I, th I think it is such a relevant topic you know happiness and and bo actually says he's like look i i'm not a happy guy you know he goes i'm i'm massively optimistic but i'm not necessarily like this huge happy type of person um and what he talks about like when when it comes to happiness he's like and and his kids or his current kid uh, little baby may he's like i don't want to teach my kid happiness i want to teach my kid fortitude and challenge and friendliness and i was like wow that's that's mm -hmm. what you want to do because you know if you can teach whoever it is these sort of things then happiness is probably going to be a byproduct of that do you know what i mean and i think you know it's, it's very difficult to like go like explain to people how to find happiness 
Uh, but I, but I think one of those ways, Craig, is, is maybe by finding like a little bit of purpose in life, you know, taking full accountability for, for who you are as a person and searching for that purpose, you know what I mean? And once you find that you have a bit of purpose, you, you really do just sort of change the whole, uh, energy rhythm of your body and then how you see the world and these sort of things. And, and, and that I feel does really ultimately give you a, a sense of achievement and then happiness as well, you know? So, mm-hmm. so like, you know, you and I are, and, and lots of people are constantly on this journey of like uh, personal development. And I think that is part of finding happiness. And what does that mean? It means uh, finding your purpose by trying new things, you know, so we've both been for many, many years trying new things, you know, and, um, you know, getting our thinking challenged and uh, trying to become smarter by, by reading articles and listening to podcasts and watching documentaries and reading books and all these sort of things, you know, and, and doing things that push us um, out of our comfort zone. So, um yeah, there's so much to kind of like, you know, there's so, there was so much else around it too that he, that he spoke about uh, for happiness, wasn't there, Craig? Oh, totally, Gary. It was, it was a great topic that we touched on. I think very important one, as you said. And, uh, you know, the, the thing is that, that we do want to reduce the suffering in our lives. You know, that's, that's a, an obvious thing. We want to make sure that we have a sort of baseline where we feel comfortable a lot of the time and we reduce the suffering where we can. But as you said, that's not necessarily meaning that we are happy uh, all the time, but one way to try and tap into small amounts of happiness all the time is exactly that is just finding joy and contentment and peace in the small things. So, you know, when you wash the dishes, take a moment to, just be grateful that you're there and, and are, you know, you can actually do this and, and find some, find some enjoyment in the tasks, in the process of things uh, and not just reaching a point because um, we often think when we get the car or the house or the girl or whatever it is, that's going to be it. You know, now I'm happy. And the reality is that you're going to have that and then it's going to go and then you'll have it again and it'll come and go. And that's okay. That that that's the whole point is that it's not just the striving on this linear sort of path to happiness. And so one day we'll reach it and we'll be there. And I think the sooner we can understand that, the the better our overall lives get. And the the more we understand that when challenges arise, that's we should be almost happy about that because we know this is where we really grow. And I think that's his real deep message there. And one other way is like. Um, where we can, we often find unhappiness is when we feel bored and boredom is an, another interesting thing is like Bo says he's never been bored in his life. And I love that as well, because if you find curiosity and fascination, as I was saying a moment ago in, in the small things that we're doing day to day, um, how can you ever be bored? You know, we, our minds are so active and when you try and practice meditation, and you sit there and you witness and you uh, have an awareness of your surround, suddenly life springs out of everything and it consumes us. And we realize, wow, there's so much happening around us. There's a bird and there's this and there's that and the feelings within our body. And, and we never take that time to, to sort of connect with that. And I think um, if we reducing our boredom by just being engaged with life and the curiosity uh, then we are already like halfway there to feeling this sort of peace within our bodies. Hey, yeah, Craig. Wow, man, I literally couldn't have uh, you know thought of a better way to kind of um, yeah say it or even finish it off. Maybe just like you know, in relation to the boredom thing, um, is just to you know, if you are building something or you you're trying to achieve something, just trust yourself. You know what I mean, and and do things at your own pace. Uh, the, as soon as you do that, it basically takes the pressure off to do things. Everything does take a long time. And um, if you can take that pressure off, uh, it's, it's one less stress to worry about, which kind of then adds to kind of that happiness bucket, if we want to call it that. And, mm. you know, um, you know, just find joy in those small things, like you said, and, and we're all on this journey and we're all, 
trying our best and uh, let's just make the most of it as we can and have fun. And uh, like Bo says, like, you know, practice that friendliness. It doesn't sometimes to, uh, to get, receive happiness or to be happy. You just actually need to maybe give a smile or say, how's it? Mm-hmm. Hello to somebody. And, and it's those little things, you know, so um, I must say what an, what an amazing chat. That's for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we learned a lot. These are just like, you know, maybe say our top three things. There's so much more in that conversation. Hey, Craig, and, um, mm. we really encourage everybody to go and listen to that chat and to also follow Bo. His YouTube channel is insane. Go and do yourself a favor and get lost there for a few hours. Um, so yeah. And thank you, Craig, as well as always, um, fantastic chats. Uh, it's great to see your face again. It's been a while since mm-hmm. we chatted, buddy. Um, and uh, just wishing everyone that's listening an amazing rest of the week. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Waking at dawn, packing the